Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today, we're gonna to be looking at my all-time favorite multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Surge. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about the differences between Generation 1 and Generation 2. Now, Gen 1 came out in 2005, and Gen 2 was released in 2013. So it's been eight years now. We're at the start of 2021. It's been eight years since the Leatherman Surge was updated. And I've got some thoughts on what they can do for the third generation Leatherman Surge. But first, let's look at the differences between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is the differences in the plier heads between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So on the first generation, you'll notice that they were nice and rounded on the outer edges, uh, much like they were on or still are today, in fact, on the uh, Leatherman Wave and the Leatherman Charge series. Where in the second generation, they took on more of a boxy frame. And you notice that they are actually a lot more robust on the second generation as the first generation. Now, one of the things that, that uh, I liked about this newer design or the second generation's design was the fact that you can use that more boxy shape as a little bit of a reaming device. So when you're cutting on PVC and conduit up to about three quarters of an inch, that more boxy or sharper edge on those pliers actually allows you to kind of deburr the inside. Really works well on PVC, uh, not quite as aggressive enough to, to work too well on EMT, but for PVC cuts, it works really, really well. Now, on the needle nose, you'll notice that on the first generation, they have a very fine serration on them where in the second generation, uh, they are a lot more coarse than what they were on the first generation. Another thing that uh, was a little bit different is you'll notice how the pliers come down to a real gradual point on the first gen. Well, on the second generation, they also come down to that gradual point, except at the very end. They leave those two teeth on the end inset just a little bit and makes the gives you the ability to you really use those as pinchers to get a hold of little stuff and they work really really well for that it was actually a pretty nice improvement it's a subtle improvement but it really made a difference in the pliers themselves now the pliers the main pliers are pretty much the same uh the second or the first generation had the wire cutters and the hard wire cutters but they were molded or part of the pliers themselves where in the second generation obviously they switched into uh, originally 154 cm and now premium wire cutters and hard wire cutters but you'll notice they 45 the the fronts of those and so that gives you the ability to still maintain the majority of the use of the regular pliers so even though they they change those for replaceables the way they did it allows you it's actually you can get a little bit better grip on larger stuff in the second generation than you can in the first generation but the first generation has just slightly longer uh, soft wire cutters than the second generation does. Now on the backs of the pliers for both generations, they, they have your strain of wire cutters and then your wire crimpers. That's one thing that did not change uh, between these two multi-tools. All right, let's get, uh, let's get them opened up and we'll look at some of the differences there. Now the interior tools for these two multi-tools are pretty much the same. The only thing that changed was they changed the orientation of the large driver to move it to uh, the center as opposed to the outside where it used to re, uh, reside. And then they switched out the little reversible micro screwdriver in the first generation, and they added in the 1 8 inch screwdriver in the second generation. Now, when I first upgraded to the second generation, uh, because I did use the little micro driver, I thought that that was going to be an issue for me. But over time, I found that because of the applications that I use the Leatherman Surge in, it's more of a kind of a an industrial tool, really. I mean, uh, multi-tools in and of themselves are not replacements for tools, uh, for dedicated tools. But in the environments that I use this multi-tool in, I found that I really don't miss the little micro driver as much as I thought I would. So it's, I kind of feel like it's better suited for some of the smaller tools than the Leatherman Surge. And so I, I really like how they made the tool set a little bit different in the second generation. Originally, I didn't think I would, but over time, I found that I, I, it worked better for me. Now I've come back to the pliers for just a second because there's a there's a real subtle difference between these two uh, apart from just the overall plier geometry that you may not notice right off the start and it's very hard to pick up on camera 
but the second generation surge pliers are actually just a touch longer. It's a little over a 16th of an inch, uh, but it, it ended up making a very huge difference. And I want to show you why. Okay. So I've got the tool kind of in its halfway closed position here. And you'll notice that in where those pliers are, you can see it up against that screwdriver. Well, what would happen because the, this, this uh, plier is just a touch shorter, it's also quite a bit narrower. So what would happen was it would hook onto that little screwdriver and at times it would catch there. You can see it's actually trying to push that bit over just slightly. And so when you tried to close them, it would catch. And sometimes when you were shutting the multi-tool, it would really pop against your hand. Now in the second generation, those that, that plier head is a lot wider. So it's not pushing that uh, that screwdriver over and it really just slips right over the top. So when I close this, it closes down nice and smoothly. Where in the second generation, and also if we look at the other side, sometimes that narrower plier head would kind of jam itself in between the two outer tools. So it doesn't always do it, but it, it on occasion it would. So then what you really had to do to close this properly is you had to, you had to break the handles over and then you had to recess the plier all the way down shut and then it would close pretty easily. But if you didn't do that, if you just closed them and you had the pliers open like so, oftentimes, and it didn't do it that time, but oftentimes that plier would catch right down there on that screwdriver and so it'd get to a certain point and it would kind of stick on you and then it would all of a sudden it'd pass it and it sometimes would catch the meat of your hand and it hurt like the Dickens. But uh, that's one improvement that they made between the first generation and second generation that you really, unless you handled these two tools, uh, you really wouldn't be able to tell, especially on camera. Now for the knife blades on the outer tools, this is one thing that didn't change. Both of these are pretty much the same thing. There wasn't any differences. The Both of the uh, serrated blades have that, uh, the little bit of jimping there. There was a slight difference. They, they used to round off a little bit better. And I think that was more of a quality control issue yeah, where you, where your finger catches are for opening those blades. They're a little bit sharper on the second generation, but overall those two blades are identical. Now, two changes were in the other two tools though. So if we get the scissors opened up here, you notice that in the second generation surge, it's an all metal piece for the uh, thumb, where you would catch your, with your thumb to operate the scissors. So they made that uh, a little thicker and then they just ground this piece or ground the, the this half of the scissors out of a larger piece of, of stainless steel. Where in the first generation, they didn't do that. They used a smaller piece and then they inserted a little rubber catch. Uh, both of them work fine, though I think that the ones on the second generation surge are a little bit more comfortable. This was quite comfortable too. Uh, it's just, even though they add that plastic piece, this one is still a little bit wider. And so it's, it's a little bit more comfortable to operate. So let me close both the scissors down and we'll look at the other side. Now this is, this is where they made one of their major improvements. So one of the great things about the Leatherman Surge is the fact that it does have the uh, Bosch T-Shank adapter for adding on uh, aftermarket blades that you can put on it, whether that be a wood saw or metal saws or diamond or uh, PVC, just any number of different cutting instruments that you can put on the Leatherman Surge that you can't do with other multi-tools. So the one thing that they did add on to though is in the second generation, they added this spring. They, they used hole cutouts that would allow the spring to bypass whenever you had the saw or the file in place. Now, what that did is some of your smaller or your thinner aftermarket um, blades, they would rattle inside of the T-shank adapter. So in the first generation, they didn't do that. They had them solid. So both on the file and the saw, they had solid T-shanks in them. And so this was a big improvement because uh, it really allowed, in fact, let me get a couple of blades in here and I'll really show you the difference and why that was such a big improvement. Okay, so I've got a couple of Linux uh, 24 TPI uh, metal cutting blades here. And we're gonna set one into the first generation surge and then we'll set the other one into the second generation surge. 
I can get it seated correctly. So the spring on here, now it's not completely solid because that spring doesn't have super tension, but it just has just enough tension. If I put a little bit more pressure on it, you can see that while the blade moves, the base is really kind of solid. Where on the first generation surge, that is not the issue. You can see how at the base of that blade, it really moves around. You can hear it rattle in there. Or if you do that on the second generation, it doesn't do that. So this was a huge improvement uh, from Gen 1 to Gen 2, what they added into the search. With all those changes they made between Gen 1 and Gen 2, it really made the Generation 2 Leatherman Surge a lot more refined than what that first generation was. Now, I know a lot of people kind of like the smooth outer uh, plier head that you find on the, on the Wave and Charge series, as well as the first generation Surge, and a lot of other multi-tools that they've made down the line. I prefer the more boxy shape because I'm able to get a little bit more uh, accomplished with it. They're obviously a lot more robust. Now, in all my years of carrying multi-tools, and I own and have carried a lot of them, the only thing that I ever broke was a pair, it was a first generation surge. I snapped the pliers on a first generation surge. What I was trying to do was I was trying to remove a very big cotter pin out of, a, uh, out of an axle and I twisted it and it was my own fault. I should have never been trying to do that with, with those pliers, but I ended up, I had enough force on it where I actually snapped the plier in half about midway through uh, the regular pliers. I've never done that on the second generation surge and I've done similar tasks, but I have kind of made myself aware of what I was working on. Multi-tools in and of themselves, again, are not the tool counterparts. They are able to accomplish a vast majority of what regular tools will, and hence the reason that they're so valuable for people that carry them. But I've, I've made myself be more conscious of what I was working on. And so from second generation on, I've never broken another multi-tool. Now, the reason I never broke one on some of the smaller versions like the Wave, Charge, Rebar, stuff like that is because I never felt that they were capable of handling what the Leatherman Surge will. And so I never even attempted to put that kind of force on some of those smaller multi-tools. So let's talk about what they can do to improve a, the Leatherman Surge for the third generation. So on the right, I have my modified Leatherman Surge. This is a second generation Surge that I modified. And I've actually done quite a bit to this and I call it my Leatherman Super Surge. And if you wanna see some of the stuff that I did to it, I'll put a playlist up here that you can check out at your convenience. So on the left, I have the second generation Surge and I wanna show you some of the differences and what I did uh, to my second generation that made it a little bit more conducive for some of the stuff that I do. So one of the first things that you notice is that I have four tools on this side as opposed to the three that come standard with it. And the way I accomplished that was, first of all, I wanted my screwdrivers on the same side. So I had to reprofile everything a little bit, basically shave down each tool just slightly so that I could get this to work. And I really liked having the two screwdrivers on the same side. Now, I had to do pretty much the same thing for all these tools. So I had to do that with the combination tool for the can opener, bottle opener, wire stripper. I had to do it with this screwdriver. I had to do it with the awl, which in fact actually worked better because this awl is actually, it actually works just a little bit better than what the original one did because it is slightly thinner. It actually produces a, a, a it, it's really slight difference, but I did notice an improvement where it's able to do all uh, capabilities a little bit better, gets through stuff like plastic a little bit easier. And I do that a lot for making straw holes for my daughter in her, in her juices and milk and stuff like that. So the last tool that I added on here was actually an inspiration from the Swiss tool spirit line. And what they have is they have a chisel, they have a cut edge here that allows for a uh, box cutting, a uh, box opening or package opening package packaging tape. They also have the cable cutter, and that's the one thing I wanted in here. And then they have their wire stripper integrated in here, where on the surge, it's into this tool. So that was not something I necessarily needed to add. But what I did do was I took inspiration from that, and I ground in a... In fact, let me close it up here a little bit. Now, I put it on the outside because the way I use this is to set it in here and be able to, to get around cable, and I think it works better for me in that orientation. So I ground in 
a cable cutter in into here for getting around cutting uh, the sheathing off of extension cords and SO cables, stuff like that. And then I also ground in a chisel point to the front of it. Now mine is a little steeper and because I had to use one of the, uh, a, a donor screwdriver off of another multi-tool, uh, it has kind of a two cut edge here where on the one from the Swiss tool, uh, Spirit, it doesn't have that. And I really like that chisel tip that comes on there on, on these. So this is one thing that I think Leatherman can do uh, that, that uh, would be a great addition or, or a tool that's similar to it. And I want to pull these out here and I'll show you a couple of these tools side by side to show you how I had to reprofile them and how much material I actually ended up taking out. I don't remember the exacts on every single one of them, but uh, they were pretty close to one another. So you can see I've taken out quite a bit of material in that all in order to get that fourth tool to work, but I've not noticed any performance difference, if you will, in the all or the screwdrivers or anything else that I modified in my Leatherman Super Surge. So one thing that they could do is they have the room there. If they reprofile those tools a little bit, they have the room to get another tool in there. Now, what could they put in there? What would be more beneficial for the population at large? That's, an, that's up for discussion. For me, I really like that cable cutter and chisel. I think those are, are two tools that are on a lot of Victorinox tools that Leatherman really should think about coming up with their own version to put in something like the Leatherman Surge. And one of the things that I love about uh, the Leatherman multi-tools that have the bit exchanger, while they're, they're, they're flattened proprietary bits are not the greatest in the world, they're okay for, for most tasks. The fact that you can add in an extension and then put these bits out there, or you could put in a full dimensional bits, really helps uh, expand the capabilities of a Leatherman multi-tool, especially in the surge. Now, the, the problem is, is because of the type of spring that they use in here, using a standardized bit is not the easiest thing in the world to do. So what you have to do in order to make that work is in my Leatherman surge, the one I carry, I ended up using uh, Weha's double-ended bits, and I carry their number one, number two Phillips, and that really works well in combination. Uh, in fact, their whole bit kit does in combination with the standard driver. Now, there has been tail, and it, it, I don't know if it's going to come out, but there was some leaked photos of a ratchet driver that integrates into the Leatherman bit exchanger. And you can check that video out here if you're interested in it. So there's nothing definitive yet. And there's only it only showed up on a couple of sites. And then it was immediately taken down. In fact, not long after I contacted Leatherman to ask him about it. It was actually the very next day. And so I'm hoping that we actually see that. Because I think that would be a huge improvement for the Leatherman Surge, really expand its capabilities in the accessories. So if they included that in the accessories, I think that would make a huge, huge difference. Now, the last area of improvement that I think Leatherman can make with the Leatherman Surge, and that is to increase the quality of the blade steel. So the Leatherman Charge Plus and most of the Charge variants have a 154cm blade, which is above and beyond the 420HC that comes in the Leatherman Surge. While the one, well, the 420HC is it's a, a good budget steel, I guess it it doles quite a bit quicker than what you're going to have with a 154CM. Now, obviously, the the harder steel in like the charge is going to be a little tougher to sharpen up. But the benefit is, is it going to stay sharper for a lot longer? Now, when you get into the TTI version, it actually has an S30V blade, uh, so it's even an even better blade steel that comes in that one. And frankly, with the money that they're charging for a new surge these days, it's really time that they added a premium version to the line. I myself would definitely advocate for a 154 CM. I like the 154 CM. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily better or worse, but it. I like it because it's just a touch softer. It's a little bit easier to sharpen up than the S30 V. Uh, that you get on the TTI version, but it is definitely time for Leatherman to upgrade the blade steel in the Leatherman Surge.
those are some of my thoughts on what we could see or how they can improve the Leatherman Surge for a third generation. Now, if you guys have a different line of thinking, if you think there would be something that would work better in the Leatherman Surge, just put them in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion about what you guys think would work better. Now, the Leatherman Surge, in my opinion, is one of the best multi-tools ever built. In fact, I think it's the best, in my opinion. So with the additions of, of stuff like their bit kit, their proprietary bit kit, and their extension, uh, you can really expand the capabilities of the Leatherman Surge. Now, I don't think there exists the perfect multi-tool. Uh, there's different needs for different people, and I don't think anybody's ever going to find exactly, truly, 100% what is perfect for them unless they just custom build the thing. But the Leatherman Surge is very, very close to a perfect multi-tool for me. It's very robust. It's very large. Uh, when you consider it against the four inch frame size, the four and a half inch frame size really suits me better. And the improvements that they made from Gen 1 to Gen 2 were a huge, huge step in the right direction. But I think that there is a little bit more room for improvement in a Generation 3 Surge, some of the things that I mentioned before. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one.